Okay, thank you everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. So I'm a basic scientist, a basic researcher with a passion about science. And, um, but another passion that I have is to actually use the science and all the basic knowledge that we have and new discoveries that we do every day in the lab to translate that into uh, new therapies and novel treatments. And hopefully I can convince you that stem cells and the uh, uh, organoids that we developed from stem cells are actually very good models to test these new therapies. So just a brief introduction. So Ashley introduced blood stem cells, which are actually adult stem cells. We work with a different type of stem cells. We work with something that is called induced pluripotent stem cells. So these are one of my favorite cells in the body, not my favorites, but very special because they can uh, divide in the dish, so in the lab uh, indefinitely. So we have a good bank of these cells. They can form every single cell of your body Given the right instructions, they can form um, your eye, liver, heart, muscle, anything you can think of. And um, nowadays, we can actually get these cells from a blood sample. So we go back to blood or maybe a very small piece of skin. And we can deri uh, derive these cells using four different factors that were discovered uh, actually um, uh, this, this discovery won the Nobel Prize in 2012. And, uh, um, oh my God, Yamanaka. <laughs> Yamanaka, I'm trying to remember. So Yamanaka discovered the four crucial factors that are actually involved in stem cell development. And um, he discovered this, that these four factors are uh, essential to transform the blood cells that we isolate in the lab or the skin uh, cells into the pluripotent stem cells. So now they're called induced because they receive these four factors. And when you look down the microscope, they're there on that uh, image at the top. You don't really distinguish them from other uh, embryonic stem cells that in the past we used to obtain from uh, human embryos. So what we do in the lab now, we grow these cells, we have a bank of these cells, and we can based on our knowledge of uh, development. And development, I'm talking about the knowledge that we have been obtaining from flies, fish, frogs, so all the beautiful developmental knowledge that was done years ago using these animal models. We can now apply it to our human cells. So one thing that I need to emphasize here, we can generate these cells from patients or from healthy individuals, and these cells have the same genetic background, right? So if there is a mutation on a, a gene of these patients, these stem cells will also have that mutation, right? So patients' own cells now generated into stem cells. Now we know what growth factors, what uh, uh, recipe to use to make these stem cells into the cells of our body because of our studies in developmental biology. And we can do two things. We can grow very simple so does the, okay, very simple cells on a monolayer in the dish, growing a bit messy as you can see here, you know, but we have a few light sensing cells of the eye. So I also work in ophthalmology and my job is to actually make retinal cells and the cells that actually sense light, the photoreceptor cells. So here you can see a bunch of the green uh, rod photoreceptors there. Uh, but recently, and this was back in 2008, 2009, we were doing this type of cultures. Nowadays, we can actually make the stem cells into floating bodies. So basically just dissociate them, put them together into a small ball in the dish, and we give them the factors. The beauty is that because we form that three-dimensional uh, niche, these cells now spontaneously know how to form certain organs. And here I can show you a human organoid. So basically this is a mini eye that has been formed from the stem cells. Now the difference is that this mini organoid, this mini organ has all the different cell types of the retina. They are laminated just like they should be at the back of your eye 
they are functional when we grow them for a long time in culture. So the difference again is like in this case, in 2D, you cannot maintain their life for too long. They don't like that environment because it's not the correct environment that they should be. But here we can keep these cells for over a year now and they're functional. Now, what do we do with these cells? We test therapies. And one of them that we do in the lab is to test gene therapies. So here, uh, Tom introduced the eye, and I'm just, I'm just gonna highlight the, the photoreceptor cells, so the light-sensing cells. The most, those are my favorite cells. Quite close to stem cells, but my favorite ones, because my job is to treat these cells. And if you lose these cells, or if you have a gene defect on these cells, you're gonna go blind, pretty much. So what we do here, and I'm showing in green here, once uh, the cone cells, the ones that are responsible for color vision, central vision, so very essential for human vision. I'm showing them highlighted in green here. Again, this has been transduced with a viral vector, so it has received gene therapy. In this case, I used the viral vector to deliver the green protein because I wanted to separate these cells and transplant them. Uh, to do transplantation experiments that we also do, so cell therapy in this case. But what we can do is to basically um, test new therapy. So if you have a certain disease, for example, Usher's, that is one of the syndromes that we are trying to develop therapies in, in the lab, we can now uh, design the viral vector try and um, fit everything inside these vectors. Usher's is very challenging, so we actually have to use numerous AVs or use the uh, CRISPR-Cas and, and edit the DNA, as Tom mentioned before. And we can use an, uh, the retinal organoids to test this therapy. And here is an example of the Usher treatments that we are doing. So basically, this is what uh, the viral vector carries. So it carries the cutting machinery, which we call Cas9, the SA Cas9, and a, a couple of guide RNA. So basically they're guides that are going to guide your Cas9 to the right place of the genome so it can go and cut and hopefully make, you know, the, the cells um, recover. <laughs> So here I'm just showing uh, an image of, again, of the uh, retinal organoid that was treated. So the beauty of the retinal organoid is that it's a human cell. So if you want to edit the genome, your guide RNAs that are guiding your cutting machinery are specific to the human genome. So you need to have a model where you can test these therapies. And I argue that the human organoids are the best models because they are human mini organs that closely resemble the, the native organ. And um, another disease that we have interest on, it's Stargardt's. So Stargardt's is a maculopathy, so defects in the macula. So the macula contain your cone photoreceptor cells. Uh, so it's an area rich in cones, and again, is responsible for the central vision, color vision, and visual acuity, so very important for us. And uh, Stargardt's is a disease that affects those cells in that area. Again, it's a large gene, so it's a challenging one. We can't just deliver with normal uh, AV uh, and the replacement that Tom explained before. What we need to do in this case is to use two AVs. So we transduce, we add two different viral vectors to the mix, to the cells in growing in vitro, and we hope that they come together inside the cell and rescue the disease. So this is all happening in, in the lab still, with the hope that we can show efficacy in these human organoids, and then uh, in a few years move on to clinical trials. And this is happening in parallel with a lot of other research, research going on, with other clinical trials happening. But again, um, here it's to emphasize the importance of stem cells and the organoids and how they can be beautiful models to test the therapy. And do I have anything else? 
I have, yeah. This uh, is also not contained to the eye. We have a speciality in the lab, so once you generate organoids, you can pretty much play with your stem cells and try and generate other organs, and that's what we do. So we generate cortical organoids or neuronal brain organoids, and this one has actually been transduced again in green because we want to visualize the treatment with a uh, viral vector, and you can see how efficient it is in the neuronal cells. Uh, here we have a heart, is this going to play? So this is a video of a heart organoid, a cardiac organoid that beats. Um, and here we have lung organoids, so airways. So just showing really the beauty of the models and how we now have thousands pretty much of human uh, models that we can test therapies on. Thank you.